Welcome back. Welcome back. Listen, we're back with another episode, and um, this one is a special one. I mean, aren't they all special? Listen, today we're going to explore the different ways we connect with one another. I'm your host, Derek, and uh, I want to talk about the importance of effective communication and how it impacts us in our daily lives. Let's jump right into this one, right? Uh, Let's talk about the basics. A lot of the times we take for granted how we communicate. We don't put much, much thought into it. And so the impact sometimes is very subpar. Sometimes it's very great. Depends on how much you've actually invested in the way in which, you know, you communicate. Now, Communication is a process of exchanging information. It's a process of exchanging ideas, our experiences, and our thoughts. Through speaking and writing, our body language, and other forms, whether social media or different tools that we have accessible to us, right? So these are the different things and the ways in which we communicate. In fact, it's a fundamental part of the human interaction. It plays a vital role in both our personal and professional lives. Like, think about that. If you lack the ability or the skill to communicate effectively, a lot does not get done. A lot of opportunities don't present themselves to you. And people don't reach out to you or connect with you because you're you know, your, your inability to communicate. So you might miss out on quite a bit of, uh, of opportunity to do different things, you know, and whatnot and and meet different people. So it's important that we kind of hone in on that and, and, you know, fine tune or sharpen our skills. Um, I guess the question I really want to pose is, do we really know how to communicate effectively? That's something for you to consider. I want you to ask yourself that. How well do you think you communicate and how effective do you think your approach to communication is? And do you get through to people? Do people understand you when you are presenting new ideas or information? And I think that many people have the tendency to focus on words that they're saying rather than the message that they're trying to convey. Or the impact that they hope to have on other people, right? Or how effective, you know, um, their delivery is of that message, right? And is it getting through to people the way that they intended it to? Or is it falling short? Those are things to consider and, and kind of assess yourself in, in how well do you think you communicate. I think it's important to remember that communication is about the exchange of ideas, and understanding. It's not just about the words that we use. It can't be. Because that's that's very limiting. Right? Study has shown that communication um, is a higher percentage. I can't remember. I believe it's 70% body language. So the messaging and the, the interpretation, the, your eyes and your body and your hands give off, gives a lot more information to the listener or the receiver of that that message than what you think you're giving off, right? It's, it's about learning. And it's also about the willingness to grow out of discomfort as well as comfort, right? You've heard me say it many times. You have to get uncomfortable in order to really achieve that success or, or to become comfortable with who you are. But first, you have to become uncomfortable. And that's where growth happens, right? It's not limited to, to speaking or writing. It's also not limited to nonverbal communication, such as body language and the tone of your voice. And, and how active are you as a listener, Right? These components are also effective components of communication. Like if you think about it, 
we speak, someone listens, but how we speak to someone, the tone in which that we use is going to determine whether they're willing to accept, receive, and process the information that we just delivered. Now, if I'm speaking to you in a tone that makes you feel this big as opposed to this big, your response to me is going to vary, right? So we have to consider all these things. We can't just say because I, you know, I'm, I'm spewing out all these facts, therefore I'm right. We all understand, and if we don't, we should understand that a matter of right and wrong is all based on vantage points. Where I'm standing when that information is coming, who is coming from, how fast, how is it delivered, right? And whether I say I'm right or you say you're right doesn't matter because my experience is my own. My interpretation is my own. I have to be willing to let go of my understanding and adopt some of yours. And if I'm not willing, it doesn't make you right and it doesn't make me right or wrong, right? It's just we're at a disconnect. Keep that in mind, right? An understanding we all need to agree on is that nonverbal communication is just as important, if not more important, than the words that we use in many situations and, and often in, in many circumstances. Let me give you an example of um, you know, a poor communication scenario. So let's say we have a couple, right? And they've been in this relationship for eight months. They're planning a week-long trip, but they have different ideas about where they want to go. One person wants to go to Europe, while the other person prefers, you know, a relaxing time on the beaches of, let's say, Cuba. I mean, it could be Jamaica, it could be Dominican, Regardless, it's on a beach. Now, the person who wants to go to Europe insists that their choice of location is better because, you know, it's one, one of the places that's been on their bucket list for a long time and that they're not interested in being on a beach because they've been to all those places many times before. So... Two individuals in a relationship at a disagreement because they can't decide. Now, the person who wants to go to Europe is not considering the other person's feelings. Right now, because their feelings isn't being considered, they got into their feelings. Now they're bothered. They're bothered because they feel like their partner isn't hearing them. Right. And because they don't feel like they're being heard, they become a lot more resentful towards their partner. Now, you know, this person's voice is not being heard. They feel like they're being dominated in this situation as far as decision making. So because they're not being heard, guess what they do? They withdraw from the conversation. And decides not to go on the trip. The other person who wants to go to Europe notices that their partner is upset and they become frustrated with them because of their lack of participation in the entire conversation. They both feel like the other person is being unreasonable and they stop speaking. As a result, the relationship suffers. How many of you have been in this situation before? Right? Right? They argue and ultimately decide not to go on the trip at all. So both parties lose because it is poor communication skills that they both have. Neither one of them was open to the other's suggestion. They weren't listening, not actively anyway. And quite frankly, they didn't care. Now, me personally... When someone gets emotional, I tend to, you know, give them the space, whether that's right or wrong, that's up to you. But I give them the space because I don't want to be the one 
to own someone else's emotions. I also don't think I'm the one responsible for triggering those emotions. That individual needs to work on, you know, honing onto those things. Right? That's just my opinion. Now, I could be wrong and that's fine. Right? I could be right and that's also fine. But that's not the point. I'm just sharing with you my approach sometimes. And sometimes it works in my favor and sometimes it just doesn't. And I'm living with that. I'm okay with that. Now, that's one scenario. Let me share with you another scenario that might have a better outcome. Right? So, the same couple, same situation. Now, instead of dismissing each other's ideas, they take the time to listen and understand the other's perspectives. Because by doing that, you might actually be able to come up with a um, a solution that benefits both parties. In doing that, they both recognize that they have valid points. And they come up with a compromise. So the compromise is they will go on a cruise, but they will also go on a scenic excursion in the cities that they visit. Because, you know, cruises stop in different islands. It could be a, a, a Caribbean cruise or it could be a European cruise. But it gives them the opportunity to spend time on the beach, right? As well as go on those excursions and scenic adventures. But they communicate openly and respectfully throughout, you know, the trip. And together they have a great time. That's effective communication. Right? When you're able to understand the other side, the other person's views, and then try to meet them halfway. Try to compromise. It doesn't mean you throw your um, you know, ideas out the window. But you take theirs and you, you, lack a better term, you marry it with yours. And because you're doing that, guess what? You might actually end up with a better solution that you both couldn't even process. Because you're so focused on just your ideas. So I guess the message here is work on being a better listener. Because you have to listen with the intention of trying to understand don't listen with the intentions of having a rebuttal. It's just to understand. Right? And that might help. So, something to keep that in mind. Now, oftentimes there are challenges. Right? I mean, I just gave you two scenarios and you saw what the challenge was with that scenario. So, um, communication, even though it's fundamental... Right of our interactions, it can be challenging, and we know that. Right, we know that from misunderstandings to miscommunications to passion to frustration to yelling to not speaking, um, emotions to deflection. There are many obstacles that can get in the way of effective communication. Now, one of the biggest challenges is the ability to actively listen, right? You heard me mention it before, but many people are so focused on what they want to say next rather than truly hearing and understanding what the other person is saying, that they, they miss their opportunity to, to, you know, hit the mark, right? Another challenge is, is being able to communicate effectively in a diverse society. Now, oftentimes when people speak about diversity, we, we refer to the color of our skin, the hues of our complexions, um, our ethnicity, our gender, and, and all these things. But that's not enough, right? Twin siblings can be extremely diverse based on just their interests. Right? The things that make them tick internally. So we need to look at diversity a little differently. But that's for another episode. It's important to be aware of cultural differences. Right? And to adapt our communication style accordingly. Some people don't make eye contact when they communicate with others due to cultural right, customs. So 
we need to be aware of these things so we don't offend somebody or dismiss someone's views or opinions on, on certain things because they may not be communicating the way that we are accustomed to. We need to be adaptable, right? Because naturally we have, we have barriers that I like to call opinions, <laughs> ideas, beliefs, right? We have our own prejudices and, and biases that get in the way um, and prevent us from actually communicating the way we would love to with other people. Some of these barriers often prevent us from presenting the best version of ourselves. In fact, it's important to be aware of the challenges of communication, right? And make sure you take some of those steps that's necessary to overcome them. And, and some of those steps might be getting more familiar with the people that you're working with. If you're in a relationship, getting familiar with that person or your partner's tendencies and habits and routines and things that make them tick when they get excited or things that shut them down when they're down. You know, they don't feel like participating. What are these things that's making them tick and, and bringing them back down? Right. It's important for you to be aware of these things. The more you're in tune, the more effective a communicator you're going to be. Right. So let me see if I can share some um, tips for effective communication and, and things that you can do to you know improve on your skills. One of the most important things is to be clear and direct in your communication. And this is interesting because it might contradict something that I said earlier about the other person's feelings. Right? What I'm saying is make sure that your message is clear and that the other person understands what it is that you're trying to say and that you are saying. But ultimately, what you need to do is make sure you say what you mean and mean what you say because you really can't take them back. But in doing that, I want you to be a little bit sensitive to a degree, not to the point where you submit your position. Right? This is what I mean by that. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't be disrespectful about it. Own it, but don't be disrespectful about it. Don't be sarcastic about it, right? Don't be condescending about it. But if the person is struggling to understand you, try a different way to deliver that message. I don't want you to sugarcoat it and make up some other fluff to appease their feelings because that's not going to benefit you and what you're trying to communicate. Hence the term, say what you mean and mean what you say. But do not own other people's emotions or baggage. Right? Because they're often just a distraction and they discourage you from standing by what you believe to be the truth. It's important to be open to feedback and be willing to listen to others. That mentality can definitely help you build trust and understanding in any relationship, whether personal or professional. And don't forget about the importance of nonverbal communication. Because sometimes what you don't say is telling a lot. Your body will always tell the truth. Your mouth might say the wrong things or the lies, but your body will always give you up. So be aware of your battle language and the tone of your voice and try to match them with the message that you're trying to convey. That's the key. You're trying to match what your body's telling them with the words that you're saying. The tone has to match and how you're trying to get them to understand and actually buy into whatever it is that you're delivering, right? So... Remember this, effective communication is essential for building and maintaining relationships, both personal and professional. Thanks for tuning in and join us next time for more insightful conversations about everyday topics. That's it for today's episode of DAP Show, and I hope you found it informative and helpful. Until next episode, love, peace, and nappiness.